Every once in a while, tales of mythical lands emerge from the rumour mills of the landscape photography community. Here in Patagonia, one such tale has been taunting us for years. Some say that if you travel to the very end of Chile, where the road goes no further, you will find a lighthouse. A lighthouse so beautiful and so mythical that few will ever share its exact location. Myself and Brendan Vanson have made two previous attempts to reach this legendary location, both attempts ending in failure. The first saw our path blocked by an unpassable river, meaning that we could go no further, and the second was thwarted by raging Patagonian storms. This would be our third attempt to make it to a photo location that few have dared venture. Okay, so, so far so good. The weather is calm for once. The road is clear, the tide is low, and we are making it. We are pushing on to this mythical lighthouse that has defeated us twice already. But you know what they say, third time's a charm. So I think uh, we might have a repeat of 2018 where we got forced inland by a river. We couldn't cross it. One member tried to cross oh. <laughs> One member tried to cross it unsuccessfully, Mitchell. And uh, the same seems to be happening again. There's no way of crossing the river on the beach. Wow, that's bright. There we go. So this is what we're up against. This is probably where we're going to cross and the trail does seem to pick up on the other side. So I think it's just a case of take it steady, take it slow, cross the small obstacle. It's not very deep. Worst case scenario, you get wet feet. I think we're gonna be fine. matter if this lighthouse is terrible it's just like we have to get it it's like yeah three times now we have to get this lighthouse. can't fail the third time no. it's only a four kilometer hike if we don't see this lighthouse I'm just gonna quit yeah I'm done done Patagonia next year will be cancelled yeah it's cancelled peace <laughs> I have some bad news for the third time in a row we've been defeated by the lighthouse and it's because it's just taken us too long. There was a, a forestry diversion where we had to cross the river. That took up quite a bit of time. And the terrain is like this really rocky shore, shoreline. So it's actually really slow going. And it's not that we can't get to the lighthouse. We can, but we'll get there just on sunset. Best case scenario. Which means we won't have any time to scout around compositions. It also means there's a chance that we could get cut off by the tide on the way back because high tide is one hour after sunset with the full moon. The lighthouse has defeated us for a third time in a row, but I'm sure next year we'll get there. But I hate to leave you without an image. I really do. So, we're going to jump ahead to the future, which is tomorrow morning where we're gonna shoot a beautifully dilapidated pier. And I'm quite excited that tomorrow morning, I will be able to get a nice image and we can finish this video. So, yes, I'll see you then. So, uh, this is it guys, the consolation prize, a rickety old pier on the promenade of Punta Arenas. Not exactly a mythical lighthouse or even a pristine wilderness, but little did I know that the image captured on this morning would be one of my favourites from the trip so far. So let me quickly talk you through my setup so you guys know exactly what, what's going on, what's going down here in Punta Arenas, which is where we are, don't know if I mentioned that. Three tripods, un, dos, tres. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres tripods. And the reason there's three tripods side by side so close when you have all of this space here the reason is because composition is such an important part of photography and we have this old dilapidated pier here and there's lots of lots of uh, stilts and posts and pieces of wood and, and old dilapidated uh, material that if you stand in the incorrect position even by 
just a yard, then those uh, those stilts start to inter intertwine with each other, like like so, like my fingers. <laughs> I'm not I'm not flipping you off. This is uh, this is what happens. So as you move your camera, the stilts uh, start to get in the way of each other. So by shifting left and right, you can align the stilts to make sure that they're not a jumbled up mess, if that makes sense. Um, and it makes such a huge difference. So that's why we're all shooting from this small area here. Because if we were to shoot here, then there are portions of the pier that would then begin to overlap. And that is not the worst thing in the world. Um, but it, it can, it's all about looking at your composition and thinking, how can I slightly improve that composition? So yeah, that's what we're doing. And at the minute, it's absolutely going off behind us. So the sun is about to rise and that sunlight is going to hit our dilapidated pier. And that is when we take the image, hopefully. <laughs> The sun is just coming up, you can see that just behind me there. And that is going to illuminate everything in my composition. Beautiful side light. Now I'm going to talk you through my composition very, very quickly. I'm actually not too sad that this is the consolation prize. So my composition is super minimalist. We have the old dilapidated pier just here. And then on the left of frame, we have this big oil tanker. It's catching the light now. And we have another smaller boat to the right of frame that gives the whole thing balance. I love the industry, the industrial feel, the dilapidated old pier with the industrial ships on the horizon, all being caught by beautiful light. I've placed on my polarizer and the four stop filter. The polarizer is to take glare off the water so that when the light hits the pier, you get even more contrast. Because the, by applying the polarizer, essentially the water gets darker. And with the light hitting the pier, you get far more separation between the pier and the water and the lights hitting the ship now. I really should take this image. The four stop filter gives me a long exposure of 20 seconds right now, which is perfect. I'm just checking my focus. Just, there we go. Now this is, this image is gonna be interesting because there's gonna be elements that are moving within the frame and that essentially are gonna be blurry. But then we have the solid structure of the pier. So you get that contrast. The boat is gonna be soft. But that's forgivable because the pier is so sharp. Right, 20 second exposure, F11, focusing on the very tip of the pier. And yeah, the light's just catching it now, so it should be, uh, should be quite a nice image. Whether or not I keep it in colour or black and white, I do not know. And there we go, absolutely fantastic. A beautiful, minimalist image, nice and simple. I like mine From better. <laughs> the look on your face when I said I like mine better was like sheer disgust. How dare you prefer master photographer. an image to the master photographers. <laughs> so yeah, beautiful morning. I'm sorry we didn't get to the lighthouse, but hey, what a, what a consolation prize this is. A beautiful morning here in Punta Arenas and a, a fantastic bit of photography. So yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. So the image that you just saw was not actually the photograph I captured in this video. After I had stopped filming, I decided to break out my Lee Big Stopper, also known as the 10 stop, and try a super long exposure of 273 seconds or just over 4 minutes. And the result is far better than the 20 second version which lacked that ethereal painterly like quality I was looking for. And that brings me on to the end of this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching and please do tune in next time for more landscape photography adventures. Bye for now.